All right, please listen up. What I'd like you to do is, if you look over here, guys, all they're asking us to do is find the period and the amplitude. That's it. So we just need to remember what our definitions were for the period and the amplitude. So the period, all actually, let's look at amplitude first. The amplitude, all that is is the absolute value of A. All right, now if we don't know what A is, we need to go back and think the general form of the, of the function, which is in your book, says A times sine of BX minus C plus D. All right, where each one of these numbers, each one of these coefficients are all integers, all real numbers. So A is going to be my number that's in front of sine. So I go and take a look. So my amplitude is going to be the absolute value of 3. So absolute value of 3 is obviously going to be 3. So therefore, my amplitude equals 3. All right? Yes? What is, what is like an absolute value? Isn't it like just changing it if it's a negative? It'll stay the same if it's a positive? Exactly. So if it was negative 3, the absolute value of negative 3 is still 3. Yeah. So it's like so positive 3, right? Yeah. That's easy. Yeah. The amplitude so it's, is A. Right. Yeah. Pretty much. Except if it's negative, then it's the absolute value. Right. Now, period is going to get a little more difficult. For this one, it's not too bad. Remember, period is 2 pi divided by b. So we look at, all right, well, what is b? Well, b is going to be our number that we can directly put in front of x. Well, we look in this problem, and our number is 2. So it's going to be 2 pi over 2. Well, those can cancel out, so we're just left with pi. Done. Okay? And we're going to talk more about what the period and the amplitude are in a second, but the important part of just being able to find them is really, is really important for you guys to be able to graph. That's the formula. Remember, I told you.